His name got changed to Jude. Probably a lie. Judas. The name means praise. When Jesus came along and called his disciples, those ones from the north from Galilee, the fishermen, to follow him and they followed. Later on, Jesus' own miraculous work, his teaching, his authority, his voice of how he was going to set the oppressed free. That's what rallied the troops like me from Kiriak and Simon the Zealot, who came armed with his sword and knife to follow Jesus. He gathered us all together from the north and the south, rich and poor, even got a tax collector named Matthew to follow him. He was going to lead the revolution to get Rome out of our country. I was going to follow. One of the followers, one of the other twelve, was named Judas as well. Luke says his name is Judas, son of James, but Matthew, Mark, and John change his name probably on account of me too. They change his name to Thaddeus. So there were two Judases of the group, but not to get us confused, I became known as Judas from Kiriot. Judas is scary. One day Jesus said, we need to have a bit of structure in our group. A president, a vice president, secretary, and treasurer. I suggested Matthew the tax collector be the treasurer. He knows how to deal with money. Simon and Andrew from the north, they said, no, not the tax collector. Jesus said, leave him alone. Jesus was always defending others. Leave him alone is what he said about Matthew. But if you don't want him to be tax collector, we'll nominate someone else. Someone said Judas. The other Judas. The other Judas and I looked at each other. And then the other Judas said, I can't read. I can't write. I can't count. I'm illiterate. Jesus gathered us all in, and that's when a lot fell to me to be the treasure. I had an idea. Me and Simon the Zealot, we were going to bankroll the whole revolution. We were collecting funds. People were giving donations. When Jesus raised the dead, you should have seen the money come in, especially from Lazarus. And that's where we were, eating that meal. Oh, that lamb smelled so good. We had gathered. We were feasting. And that's when I knew. There were signs, there were people, there, was, there were rumors that said Jesus was going to get killed because of what he did for Lazarus. They were out to get him because he had raised Lazarus from Lazarus, it might not be so good for you to be alive, at least not for our sake. A couple nights later, a couple nights later, at another dinner feast, the Passover meal, Jesus ate and drank with us. And then he went out to pray, and I knew that was my chance. Jesus had talked about setting the oppressed free, but until then, he was talking about loving the enemies and loving the downcast and taking care of the poor. And I knew that was all part of his plan to bring the kingdom of Israel back, the kingdom of Judah. And I was going to force his hand at turning the world right then and there. So I went out. When he went to the garden to pray, and I looked at each other, and I went and found Caiaphas in the temple. Caiaphas didn't trust me, he didn't believe me when I said I could turn Jesus in over to him. I said, I want 50 pieces of silver. 50 pieces of silver. That would bankroll us for at least a year. Weapons, armed. We would lead the revolution. Caiaphas, when he finally agreed, only offered me 30. 30 silver pieces and said, if I told anyone, he had me arrested. So we went back to the garden, me and the soldiers. Came up to Jesus and gave him a kiss on his cheek. That was the sign. I knew that a revolution would start. I walked away from the garden and they put Jesus' hands behind his back. 
I knew that tomorrow would be completely different. And a revolution would have begun because Jesus had more power in his pinky finger than in all the world put together. He would not let them take him. He would save himself and save us too. And save Judah. That was my plan. That was my hope. He was the Lion of Judah. I thought. But the next day, he was no lion. He was a lamb. He was a lamb led to a slaughter. He was a lamb. And the last words he said to me just kept ringing through my ears. Leave her alone is what he said to me about Mary. I remember him dripping with not blood on the cross, but dripping with oil from his head all the way down his beard, down his cloak, all the way past his knees to his feet. I remember Mary kneeling at his feet like she always did in reverence to him, listening to him. But this time, it was so intimate. It was almost disgraceful. She was wiping her hair on his feet. That's the last I remember before seeing him with the same oily head, but bloody this time, dripping down all the way to his feet. Lion of Judah, he was a man of God. From then on, I was called Judas Iscariot, the one who betrayed Jesus. For 30 pieces of silver, for 300 denarii, they would have fed the poor to do something. But I'm not the worst. I'm not the only one who's betrayed Jesus. How many of you were caught in between being saint and sinner? Between giving money to the poor or giving money to Jesus or giving money for oil or giving all that you have versus keeping it for yourself? How many times have you struggled with, with your own plan It wasn't part of God's plan? How many times have you betrayed God when he said to love your enemy like Jesus did? Even leave her alone when you haven't left someone else alone that you should have. How many times have you betrayed? You showed up for worship one day, and the next day, you're anything but worship. From the cross, Jesus said, Father, forgive them. All, all of us, Father, forgive us, for we know not what we do. I'll let you judge for yourself. My name meant praise. I was trying to praise God by leading a freedom fight for our country. And I became known as the one who betrays, not the one who praises. I'll let you decide for yourself where you stand between the praise and the betrayal. Where you stand underneath the cross since we are all sentenced to the same condemnation that he took for me and us. The story is told about me by the early church. That I took those 30 pieces of silver, I threw them back at Caiaphas' feet. And then I went out and hung myself. The story is told why. Because I wanted to meet Jesus in death. To have at least a hope for forgiveness of my sin. And the story is told that not in the garden of Gethsemane, but in the dark places, the shadowy places, how Jesus came up to Judas. How Jesus came up to me, and this time he gave me a kiss. This time it was not the kiss of death. I'll let you decide side for yourself. All I know is that we all betrayed him. And yet he is still.